Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome my guest, Pete Langan. He is snorkeling around the island of Majorca. It is called Majorca 360 Snorkel Challenge, and they're raising money for Yachting Gives Back um, and as well for Save the Med, correct? Yep, that's correct. That is correct. Well, thank you for joining us today, Pete. How far into your journey are you right now? Well, today we did our biggest swim, and it was the swim that we were not worried about, but we've been working up to. We got in the ocean today at five past seven and seven hours and 45 minutes. We got out and we're in Caligambas, which is not quite where we wanted to be. We wanted to be in Portichol, but the wind was so big across Palmer Bay, it blew us off course. And we're about 2K short where we wanted to be. But we're still happy because that's our last big swim. And we are easily more than three quarters of the way around the island. Easily. Wow. And how many days have you been at it so far? This is day 28, and I think we've got four more days to go. So Amazing. we're like, we're super pumped now because all the beaches we're going to go through are beaches that we know on the way to home. So we can swim past them happily knowing where the next one is and the next one. And every other night before now, we have to sit there with the maps and go, well, where can we reach? You know, where is the spot? Where can we get to? And sometimes we have to stop earlier than we would want to but we know that we can't swim further because there is nowhere to stop. Right. Um, so we're, yeah, today was the last big swim. And from here on in, it's just for us plain sailing. Well, let me ask you, what was the idea behind the snorkel challenge? Now you are raising money for Yacht and Gives Back and Save the Med. What is this money gonna go for within these two charities? Well, Yachting Gives Back will, um, what they will do is use that money to help people in need, basically. People in poverty, people less fortunate, fortunate than ourselves, people that have been affected by the COVID disaster and haven't got work, you know, and really need the money. And Save the Med will use the money to, um, specifically, they are going to use the money to take out the med, these things called net balls that just, uh, they're, they're hanging around the ocean out there, big balls of nets, of plastic, um, that they will go out and dredge out of the ocean. So that's what the two charities will do with the money. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, and it's a big issue right now. I mean, the environment is a huge issue. We are looking at the state of the oceans. Um, you know, a lot of people have seen the movie Sustainability, and I actually have had a conversation with Brad Robertson about that movie. Um, but what are you seeing out there? Say compared, I mean, how long have you been on the island first, actually? I've been in Mallorca for eight years. Eight so, years and I, I imagine and that if you're going to be doing a snorkeling challenge, you've been snorkeling, you know, for those eight years. Yeah, I've been snorkeling most of the time, but around my local area, which is in the southwest, which is St. Elm and Pagera and Dragonera and those sort of areas. Yeah, and, well, and those sort of areas, I mean, certainly... Um, St. Elm and Dragonera, there's a lot of fish. There's a lot of fish. There's a lot of sea life. There's a lot of marine life. There's lots to see. It's really nice. And Tim, Timothy Galgi, who is the other snorkeler, he challenged me last summer that we would do this. And we had a romantic notion that uh, we would snorkel for a bit and film lots of sea life and then snorkel for a bit more and film lots of sea life. When in reality, what we've been doing is getting up at first light, getting in the ocean and snorkeling for six or seven hours and seeing really not very much at all. And so what we've done is just cut bays, cut bays, cut bays, because there isn't that much to see, sadly. Our find... home turf is where we've seen most. Now, you were mentioning off camera that your home turf, it's a protected area, is it not? That's right. Yeah. So Dragon do you think era, that's what's making the biggest difference? It's because the protected area, that there, there's a lot of sea life, there's a lot going on because nobody can go in there and rape and pillage. 
absolutely absolutely but they still allow some small amount of fishing there which i, I don't quite understand the full rules but um there is one net up um one coast that i see regularly and there's another net over near dragonera and they seem to be able to allow to do that and i don't know why um but there's still plenty of marine life there Sorry for the noise. I, I'm just over the airport and we've got planes and all sorts going over. Yeah, there, there's plenty of marine life where we live, but we're quite shocked that that's the most that we've seen. And in fact, the biggest um, fish we've seen was a, a ray, and that was within one minute of leaving St. Elm 28 days ago. You know, and this is part of what Save the Met is all about. It's making sure that, you know, our, our waterways don't die. The oceans, the seas don't die because, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is that if our water dies, we all die because we rely on the oceans um, in order to Absolutely. give us oxygen. We rely on the, the oceans to give us food. Um, it's a natural cycle. Um, and whatever we put into the environment, even on land, that ends up in the ocean as well. So we're just not taking care um, of what we Definitely. need to be taken care of. And it's, it's really, really sad to see. Um, I mean, you know, one thing that I would encourage people to do is head to the Med, uh, Save the Med Facebook page or Save the Med um, on, they've got, they've got a website as well. We'll provide those links, yep. check it out. And I, you know, I hope that you donate there and as well. I mean, you guys have a, a fundraising going on. People can yeah, go to your you site can and donate. donate. If you go to our Facebook page, which page, which is Mallorca 360 uh, Snorkel Challenge, you can uh, donate on our Facebook page there. There's the GoFundMe. Is there's a link there, and you can donate there. Um, I think a lot of money, and a lot of time, and a lot of effort is required to, and a lot of years, years is required to put the situation right. I mean, even when we're swimming, we swim quite a lot in the deep blue and you're constantly seeing little twinkles of plastic. I mean, it looks like little bits of silver or gold in the water. What, what it is, the little white bits of plastic, and it's constant. It just goes on forever. And, and if you think we can see that now, how many years has that been just dropping to the bottom of the ocean? And, and so many beaches we go to, when you really look at the sand, when you really, really look at it, every square inch has tiny bits of plastic embedded in it and that's today and that's been going on for 40 years so that's that's two foot deep you know of plastic yeah so yeah if you know I, donate, yeah, it's, it's, I, I remember the days um and i won't date myself but i remember the days that all of hollywood was you know up in arms over the fact that we had to stop using paper bags because we were destroying the forest and um, this great genius idea of bringing in plastic bags so that we could save the forest. What a way to save the forest yeah. is we were going to bring in plastic bags and then everything was plastic and what a wonderful thing it was. Um, and, and I look back now and I, you know, I mean, those paper bags, every single time that somebody, you know, at that time, the laws were such that if you cut down a tree, my father was a logger, um, when you cut down a tree, you had to plant two. So they were actually yeah. planting two more that, you know, one more than they actually cut down. And we used to use those paper bags, you know, we would cover our school books, we would cover other things. I mean, those paper bags were used and used and used again. And the great thing about yeah. the paper bags was that they would go back into the environment and break down and, you know, be soil again at one stage. Um, but here we are 40 years later saying what a big mistake we made, you know, and, and the same yeah. Hollywood, you know, people are saying, oh, heaven forbid, we're using plastic, we need to use paper. Um, it, it's kind of interesting to see. But I want to highlight as well, Yachting Gives Back. Um, we just did touch on them briefly, but the island of Majorca has suffered immeasurably over the last little while. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm not sure exactly how many. I saw some numbers um, on their Facebook page about the amount of people that were they were feeding prior, helping to feed prior in Mallorca prior to the pandemic. I mean, it, it something like quadrupled, didn't it, over a, a small period of time? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of what you said, but I know that driving through my local area, you know, in uh, Pagera, Santa Ponsa and these sort of uh, Northwest areas, the amount of businesses that are closed is incredible. 
And so those businesses were supporting people who had work. And I know that Yacht and Give Back, they specifically help those people. Um, I was speaking to Nick the other day, and I know that during the pandemic, because lots of people on the yachts, the, the chefs on the yachts had nothing to do, he was getting them to cook meals for these people. And I think at some point he had 700 meals a day being cooked for these people. For me, luckily, it hasn't affected my work too much. I'm, I'm very lucky in that respect. But if you work in hospitality, certainly it's had a massive, massive major effect on your life. Yeah. Well, most of the people here on the island, they live paycheck to paycheck. So, you know, yeah. going a year without a paycheck or a year and a half without a paycheck is literally poverty and you are on the street. So both yeah. of these charities are very well worth giving your money to. I would suggest heading yeah. on over to the Facebook page, seeing where you can Thank donate you. because there's a button there that you can hit and, and donate to this challenge. What is your goal? Our goal is 10,000. Um, we're only up to 2,200. Um, but today we had a pledge of 500 euros, which hasn't gone in yet. And we also have another pledge of 350. So we should be up to 3000 today. And we really want to get to 10,000. Uh, that would be, you know, that's our dream. So if people would pledge something, anything, you know, five euros, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just something we've worked really hard. I mean, it's, we're not, we're not ultimate ath athletes or anything like that. We're just too normal guys um, trying to make a small difference and at the same time enjoy a challenge that we're doing. Well, I would invite anybody and especially the yachting community around the world that are tuned in. Um, <clears throat> if you have at one stage and if you are in yachting, at one stage you have been in Palma and you have seen what a beautiful island this is um, and you have enjoyed the Mediterranean Sea, I do encourage you, even if it's a euro, a pound, a dollar, Canadian, US, it doesn't matter. Please donate exactly. whatever you can. Um, and let's give these guys a great big push because ultimately is helping the locals in, in uh, Mallorca and as well as also helping the Mediterranean Sea hopefully replenish itself. Um, I yep. want to say thank you ever so much, Pete. And, uh, you know, you, let's, let's hope your next four days or so um, goes easy on you. Oh, they're going to be easy now. It's plain sailing now. We're so happy. Excellent. Crossing the Bay of Palma today was very difficult, but now it's all easy. Easy street. Well, you'll have to let us know when you recuperate and, and we'll have to have you back on and see if you've reached your goal. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you. Wonderful. Once Love again, this has been... Yeah, you as well. Once again, this has been Pete Langan. He is completing, a, well, almost completing the Mallorca 360 Snorkel Challenge. Please do donate. We're going to provide all the links below this interview when it airs. You've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time. Yeah.